You may notice I'm wearing a sweater today. And that's because we're going to talk about something very chilly. Absolute zero. Absolute zero is negative 273 degrees Celsius, and it's the coldest possible temperature in the universe. Which means that if the temperature is absolute zero, it is impossible for it to get any colder. That is pretty chilly. In fact, absolute zero is so, so, so much colder than anything you've ever experienced, no matter how cold it might get outside wherever you live. So, a few important things happen at absolute zero, and that's why we're talking about it. The first is that absolute zero is so cold that all particle motion would stop at absolute zero. You know how I always say that particles, particularly gas particles, are always in constant random motion, flying around, bouncing against the sides of whatever container they're in? The hotter it is, the faster they move, and the opposite's true. The colder it is, the slower they move. They move slower and slower and slower as it gets colder until it gets to absolute zero. And then these guys just stand still, frozen. They don't move at all. So because none of the particles are moving anymore at absolute zero, something else interesting happens. And that's that a sample of gas would not take up any volume at absolute zero. And that's because if we have a balloon that's filled with gas or something like that, it has volume because those gas particles are flying around and are bouncing against the inside of the balloon, and that's what's inflating it and giving it volume. So if, as, which is what happens at absolute zero, if these particles are just sitting there standing still, there's going to be nothing to push against the sides of that balloon, and it's not that gas is not going to take up any space at all. So absolute zero is so cold, all particle motion stops, and because of that, samples of gas don't take up any volume. So absolute zero is pretty crazy because it's so cold, in fact, that scientists know it exists, but they've never been able to get it that cold in the laboratory. Even with the most sophisticated freezers and scientific techniques they have, they've gotten close, but they haven't totally gotten it to absolute zero. So what I think is like the coolest thing about absolute zero is um, an experiment that I want to explain to you that shows absolute zero exists. It's how we can find absolute zero. So let's take a look at that right now. Okay, so in order to find absolute zero, I want to look at the relationship between temperature and volume of a gas. All right, so as I change the temperature, what happens to the volume of the gas? I said that at absolute zero, my volume is going to be zero. So what I want to do is I want to figure out the temperature where my volume of gas is going to be zero. That sounds a little weird, but I'll show you how we can figure that out. Here's what I'm going to need. I'm going to need a graph like this. I've got temperature on the x-axis. It goes from about negative 300 Celsius to 200 Celsius on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, I have volume. You go from 0 milliliters to 1,000 milliliters. The other thing that I'm going to need is I'm actually going to need a sample of gas. So I use this balloon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this balloon up and measure its volume. Let's say that I heat this up to about 200 degrees Celsius, and I measure its volume, and I find that it's 1,000 milliliters. Okay, now I know somebody is going to post a comment on this video, and they're going to say, that would never work. Because if you heated a balloon up to 200 degrees Celsius, it would melt and it would burst. Well, you know what? This is a magic balloon. It doesn't burst. So I take my magic balloon, and I heat it up, to 200 degrees Celsius, and it takes up 1,000 milliliters of volume. So let me plot that right here on my graph. 200 milliliters, 200 degrees Celsius, and uh, 1,000 milliliters. <coughs> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the temperature to, say, 150 degrees, and I'm going to measure what happens to the volume. Well, you already know what's going to happen. The volume is going to shrink because the kinetic energy of the gas particles lowers. They're not banging as hard against the inside of the balloon, so it's going to shrink. So my volume is going to lower. And I've done this math beforehand, so I'm just going to plug in some of these numbers here. As it goes down to 150 degrees Celsius, my volume is going to be around here, maybe around 850. And I'm going to keep doing this, getting it colder and colder and colder, and measuring the volume of the balloon at each step. Let me speed this up 
I'll show you what's going to happen as I fill in the volumes for all the different temperatures as it gets colder and colder and colder. Okay, so around negative 150 degrees Celsius, one of two things is going to happen. Either I'm just not going to be able to get it any colder because the freezers or the chemicals that I'm using aren't fancy enough, or it's going to get so cold that my gas is going to become a liquid. That happens a lot, right? When it gets so cold, the gas condenses. So this is kind of going to be the limit of what I can actually measure with the sample of gas that I have in the lab. And of course, by negative 150 degrees Celsius, this balloon is going to be a lot, lot smaller. Anyway, I get to the point here and my volume has gotten nowhere near zero. It's gotten close. I mean, it's gotten close, but it's not exactly zero. What can I do? Well, you know what I can do? I can do something called extrapolation, where I take a look at where this line was headed and I make a guess at the direction that it would continue to take. This point, I think I plotted it a little bit wrong. It should be a little higher here. But if you take a look, I can connect these dots and I get a pretty straight line. And even though I can't get any colder than this, based on the straight line, I can make a pretty good guess of where it's going to head. And it's just going to follow this straight line right down here. And it's going to hit zero for volume right around this point. Okay. So now the next thing that I want to do is I want to do the experiment a few more times, but the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use balloons of different volume. I'll use a smaller balloon and cool that down. And maybe I'll use an even smaller balloon and I'll take measurements at each of those points. Let me plot the temperature versus volume of two balloons that would be smaller and we'll see what they look like. So here are the values plotted for my two smaller balloons. Take a look what happens when I connect these dots and make a line, pretty straight line here. And as before, I'm going to continue this line in the same direction that was headed. And it's going to hit the same spot that my other line did. Let's do the same thing with a blue here for a really small balloon. Its volume decreases as we lower the temperature. And then we get to a point where we can't get it any colder, but we can continue the line. We can extrapolate. Remember that word. It's a really good word to use. We can extrapolate. And if we do that, it too hits the x-axis at the same point that all the others do when they get to zero. And it turns out that this place where all the three lines come together is negative 273 degrees Celsius, which is what we said earlier is absolute zero. So we took these three different size samples of gas. We looked at the volume versus temperature for each of them. And then we found that when we couldn't go any further, we could make educated guesses as to where they would all have volumes of zero. And those come together at one point. Now, the reason why people say that absolute zero is the coldest possible temperature is because when you look at this graph, all the volumes come to zero here, and it would be ridiculous. It would be like impossible for a gas to have a negative volume, right? What would it mean if a gas sample had a volume of like negative 20 milliliters, right? So based on that, scientists um, are convinced that you can't get any colder than absolute zero because then you'd have like negative volumes for a gas. This line would keep going down here and that just wouldn't make any sense. Okay? So, absolute zero, negative 273 degrees Celsius, the coldest possible temperature. But it's kind of, the number is kind of a pain because it's negative and it's a big number. So in the 1800s, somebody by the name of uh, Lord Kelvin came along and he said, wait, wait, wait. Since negative 273 degrees Celsius is the coldest possible temperature, what if we made a new temperature scale that set this as zero? And so that is exactly what the Kelvin temperature is, the Kelvin uh, temperature scale, where we take negative 273 degrees Celsius and we call this zero. And then we just go up from there. The Kelvin scale is just like the Celsius or centigrade scale, except it's just shifted down so that zero Kelvin 
is the coldest possible temperature, which is at negative 273 degrees Celsius. So that's a little bit about absolute zero and how it was discovered in the first place, and then the discovery of the Kelvin temperature scale. We use Kelvin temperatures a lot when we're doing um, problems with gas. And so if you're interested in why the Kelvin temperature is important, take a look at uh, the video called What's the Point of Kelvin Temperatures?